What he's trying to say, man, is that... Well, is it... Well, what we're all trying to say is that, that we're just... Might have to have you here, ma'am. Thank you, Pete's going well. I have enjoyed Western hospitality in every city, town, and mining camp from Furnace Creek to Carson City. But never have I had such a warm and touching and beautiful welcome as I have received here in Virginia City today. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. Mr. Wells, my manager. Mr. Wells, Roy Kauf is my name. Mighty glad to know you. This is Horse Cartwright, Hi. little Hi. Joe Cartwright, How are you? and Thank you. Mr. Searcy, the hotel man. A splendid, splendid reception. But I do have uh, one slight problem. Miss Bantry's luggage. Well, that's no problem at all. Horse here is one of Miss Bantry's greatest admirers, and he would be more than happy to render his service. Yes, ma'am. I, I sure would. Thank you. Thank you again, and I'll see all you boys tonight at the Gilded Lily. Hey! Bantry's like it, sir. Get up, admirer. Bunch of them little old skinny dresses to fill up all them bags. <laughs> Each performance a matchless miracle of tantalizing, captivating artistry. Better get your tickets early, boys. They're gonna go like hotcakes. Well, then you buckle it. Boy, the buckle who brother. Start tying everything down. Joe, I wonder if I'll lock them fellas up now or wait for the tumble start. Well, now that's up to you, Roy. This time you did it, they stole the cell. Celebrate. I mean, tell you, we're gonna throw the wing dig and hoop and holler as far down water Virginia City ever seen. Yeah, well, what, what's this all about? Oh, me and Buford hit rich. Is that right? And I mean rich. After all these here sorry years of jackass single blanket prospecting, me and Lev done struck it rich. Silver. A whole mountain of it. Hey, you sure? Well, the Henshaw Mining Company sure is sure. Give us fifty thousand dollars cash for our claim and five percent of the royalties over that as long as the claim holds out. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, going to congratulations, boys. Congratulations. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm Blackie Wells. And I want to be one of the first to congratulate the Lucky Fair. And I also want to invite all of you to see Dolly Bantry's opening performance here tonight as my guests. Dolly who? Why, Miss Dolly Bantry. The songbird of the West. Oh no. No women for us. No. Every time me and Buford gets mixed up with a woman, it ends up nothing but trouble. Women's nothing but poison to us. Ain't that right, Buford? Yes, sir. Buford and me's give up women for life. I just told them we're through with women for life. Ain't that right, Buford? Buford. Oh, Buford. 
If your foot is pretty, show it. No matter where or when, let all fair maidens know it. The foot takes all the men. The face so fair and lovely may charm the gazer's eye. But if the foot is homely, he'll quickly pass her by. He'll quickly, he'll quickly, he'll quickly pass her by. If your foot is pretty, show it. When you trip along the street, for it will catch the eager eye of every man you meet. Don't toss your glossy ringlets, nor part your lips so sweet, but gently lift your petticoats and show your handsome feet, and show, and show, and show your handsome feet. I'll let you in on a little secret. The next number's even better. So is the costume. <laughs> I seen the sun setting on a painted desert, and I thought that was beautiful. I seen a mother doe and her two newborn baby fawns stop to drink at a waterfall under a full moon in a pine forest, and I thought that was beautiful. I've seen a tricolored Shanghai rooster a standing in a field of blooming clover crown and a rainbow. And I thought that was beautiful. But I'll tell you, I never knowed what beautiful was till today. It's kind of pretty beautiful, almost. Almost like poetry. Oh, yeah. Somebody ought to just follow him around, write him down every time he opens his mouth. I'll tell you one thing. She's everything you said about her. Dolly Bantry. Ain't that the most beautiful name you ever heard? Dolly, look, just don't give me any more arguments. You understand? I've got troubles enough. I know all about your troubles, and I've tried to help. You can't deny that. I've done my best. But not this time, Blackie. Not a smelly old desert rat. I won't do it. That smelly old desert rat, as you call him, has got 25,000 cash in the bank. You hear me? 25,000 hot, restless dollars just itching to get away from him. Now, do you think I'm going to let you make me miss a chance like that? Please, you're hurting me. Well, I'm going to hurt you a lot more unless you get out there and make him feel like a colt. You're going to make him want to romp and play and start writing checks. All right, Blackie. But this is the last time... Just uh, get out there and do it. Alouette, gentil alouette. Alouette, je te plumerai. Je te plumerai le dos, je te plumerai le dos. Et le dos, et, et la bec, et la tête. Gentil alouette. What can the matter be, dear, dear? What can the matter be, oh, dear? What can the matter be, Johnny, so long at the fair? He promised he'd buy me a fairing should please me and then for a kiss. Oh, he vowed he would tease me. He promised he'd buy me a bunch of blue ribbons to tie up my bonny blonde hair. Oh, dear, what can the matter be, dear, dear? What can the matter be, oh, dear? What can the matter be, Johnny, so long at the fair? Maybe we could have a little supper again after the show next night. Get a little better acquaintance. Yes, ma'am. That should be great.
See that horse? She's stuck on me. Oh, Buford. If gunpowder was brains, you wouldn't have enough to blow your hat off. Damn, burn it, Paul. How can you say there wasn't nothing to it? You seen it with your own eyes, didn't you? Now, you gotta admit, she, she was kind of playing up to Buford. Now, then asking him to walk her down to the hotel afterwards. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Buford buckaloo. <laughs> Oh, it sounds to me you might be just a little jealous of Buford. Oh, Paul, je me jealous of Buford? Yeah, you're oh, jealous of Buford. Paul, yeah. just a little mystified, that's all. What? About what Buford has that you haven't? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and joke about it. Big laugh. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to admit, it's a little bit strange. Uh, well, I think Mr. Andrew's probably having a little bit of fun. Pass the butter, please. Having a little bit of fun with Buford and... Oh, he enjoyed it. He got a big thrill out of it. She didn't look like she was joking to me, Bob. And if she was, she's making a big mistake, because I guarantee you Buford's dead serious. <laughs> I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. You know, I was just thinking about what you were saying about Buford having something lost on him. What's that? A half share of $50,000. You know, it just could be Miss Bantry's just after his money. Joseph, you have an evil mind. Miss Bantry's not that kind of woman. She's a... She's a lady of the first degree. Well, Hoss, you know, if, uh, if Miss Bantry wasn't having fun with Buford and isn't after his money, do you realize there's only one possibility left? What's that? That Buford's right. She's stuck on him. <laughs> Where's that Casanova brother of yours? Inside, a Casanova man. Two hundred. See that? And I'll uh, tap you. Two pair, kings over tens. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not quite good enough, Buford. I've got three shiny jacks. Oh. So there's that sneaky, conniving jack of hearts. Where was your last time when I needed you? You're no good bushwhacking, blanket stealing, claim jumping polecat. Hey! Horse cart ride! Hey, you old mule swamp for you. Howdy, Buford. What are you drinking? How much you winning over there, Buford? Oh, Blackie's a little ahead, but I'll I'll peel him yet. I'll get some more ready cash, and we're going to go at it again this evening. Sure you will. I got a charge account at the bank. <laughs> now, Buford, honey, don't you forget you're going to escort me to work this evening. Blood poison, abscess teeth, and boils wouldn't keep me away. Oh, Buford, you say the sweetest things. Ain't she some pumpkin? Hey, Lev, come on in and buy some beer. What? Why, you come in here this morning with over $2,500. You mean you lost all of that? Lost it nothing. Lost, I'm going to show you something that'll scald your eyeballs. Little uh, surprise I got for Dolly. I'm going to give it to her this evening. Yeah, them's real diamonds. That there was made up special in Paris, France. Ain't another like it in the whole world. Where'd you get a gigaw like that? I bought it off of Blackie Wells for only $2,000. $2,000? $2, yeah, I just like stealing. Now buy us that drink. Three beers. Whiskey. Buford, what was Blackie Wells doing with a 
diamond necklace like that. Oh, he had it made up for a girlfriend of his in San Francisco. And when he come back from Europe, he found out she'd throwed him over for another fella, so he was stuck with this here necklace. Well, Blackie's loss is Dolly's gain. That figures. Buford. $2,000 is a powerful lot of money to be spending on just a casual acquaintance. Bella hits it big, he kind of relishes spending money. Besides, this here ain't what I'd call casual. Oh, now, come on, Buford. Use your head. You think anything really serious is gonna come of you and, and the likes of Miss Dolly Bantree? Why not? What's wrong with her? Buford, Buford, there ain't nothing wrong with her. That burnt, I admire her as much as any man. You know that. It ain't her, Buford. It's you. Well, what's wrong with me? Buford, Buford, there ain't nothing wrong with you. It's just that well, you just ain't the type for an elegant lady like Dolly Bantry now. That ought to tell you something. Hmm. Yeah. Tells me one of us is so jealous, he's just choking up on it. I don't blame your hoss. No hard feelings. You know, Lev, I don't like to talk about a man I don't know. But there's something, just something about that Blackie Wells that I don't like. I feel the same way, only a little stronger. Yeah? But it's hard to believe that a lady as pretty as that Dolly Bantry could... Be mixed up in something crooked, ain't it? Cause you know a beaver tail cactus has got about the prettiest, most innocent looking bloom of any flower that grows. Did you ever brush up against one? Blackie, I can't find that necklace that you bought me in Chicago. Oh, you'll, uh, you'll get that back this evening. A, uh, <laughs> surprise from your Romeo. You didn't. You took advantage of that poor, innocent man. You know, Blackie, sometimes I think you'd pick the pocket of a corpse. Well, you ought to be glad I did it, instead of making a fuss about it. Look, $2,000, baby. When this gets to San Francisco, we'll be free and clear. So far as I am concerned, we are free and clear right now. Baby, what are you saying? You thought you were king of the poker players. You had to buck the big game in San Francisco. Gonna make a fortune. Put us on Knob Hill with all the swells. So what happens? You lose all your money, all of my money, and $15,000 more. Ancient history. What's that got to do with anything? A lot, Blackie. You told me they'd kill you if you didn't pay off. Yeah, and I told you true. Half the bodies they fish out of that bar are men last seen playing in a big game. Losers who couldn't pay. All right, all right. I went along with you. It made me feel cheap and mean and dirty. But I helped you get the 15000 But that's all behind us, Blackie, and I am not going to do it anymore. Oh. All right, baby. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. This will be the last one. We get Buford's money, and then we stop. No! We will stop right now! Please, Blackie. Maybe we can't go back to what we were. Because, because well, we're, we're different people now, but we could at least try. Dolly, don't ever forget. Everything that I've ever been involved in, you've been involved in. So if you start acting up, I won't be the only one in trouble. I'll turn on you, baby. Quick. You'd do that? If I have to. But I won't have to, will I? Because you're going to help me. Aren't you, baby? I'm going to help you. That's my dolly.
Anything good to paper? Mm -hmm. Supper on table. It's time you get here. Where's Mr. Hoss? Upstairs, I guess. Oh, maybe so, Mr. Hoss sick? Not come to supper? Well, he came in about an hour ago. He was carrying a box almost as big as he was. I was wondering what was in it. Why don't you go ask him? Yeah, well, I, I, I did ask him, Bob. He wouldn't tell me, so I'm, I'm wondering. Would you like to read the paper? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, thank you. is right. Mr. Hoss is very sick. A man goes out and buys some new clothes, and that's a reason for staring, huh? Ah. You uh, join the circus? Oh, no. <laughs> this suit is uh, too loud for circus. <laughs> it's no good for work, either. Joe, this is not a work suit. The clerk at the store told me this is the kind of suit that a man in society wears. Uh, well, maybe a higher role than gambling, man. Yeah? Does it really fall? Yeah. Because if it does, that's just the outfit I'm after. What do you mean? What are you up to? Well, Joe thinks that, that Miss Dolly and Blackie are just after Buford's money, and, and I aim to find out whether or not that's a fact. Well, you come to supper now. I'm having supper in town with a lady, I think. Sure, no, you're some king, Jay. High rolling gambler's man. <laughs> Looks like a casino. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Miss Dolly. I come to escort you to the Gilded Lily. Come in, Buford. I bring you some... Uh, oh. oh, they're from an old friend of yours, that Dolly, Mr... Horse Cartwright! Why, hi there, Buford. Well, that's a pretty little bouquet of roses you got there. What are you doing here, you double-timing, backstabbing... Well, I, uh, I was just having a little bite to eat here with Blackie and Miss Dolly. We had... Uh, Antelope steaks and champagne. A horse was just telling us about the Ponderosa. Yes, um, cattle and uh, timber and horses. And a two-legged, soft-soaping, fork-tongued varmint that's supposed to be a friend of mine. It's the, uh, the biggest ranch I ever heard of. Yes. Oh, there's still some of your fine champagne left, Mr. Cartwright. Let me fill your glass. Uh, by all means, Blackie, if you'll pour a glass for my friend here, Buford. Too. I can buy my own. If Miss Dolly likes that stuff, I'll buy her a wagon full. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Buford, we were talking about that exact thing when you walked in the door. You know, I mean, after you and old Lev found that little piddly silver mine up there, I got to thinking, men can have a lot of fun with his money instead of just leaving it around a bank to collect dust and interest. I mean, after watching you boys run and play and hoot and holler, I decided I'd do me a little of it myself. Oh, Scott, right? I'm going to climb you like a tree. I'm going to hammer that head of yours Buford, to a point. Buford, you're then I'm going to upend like you. And I'm going to drive you're you in the ground like a stake. You're too much of a gentleman. Buford. A gentleman. You hear that? Well, I... I think it's time to go. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Well, just a gall dang minute. I asked her first. That's right, Buford. But I got here first, with the most. And that's the way it goes, Buford. Them that has, gets. Sorry. <laughs> Don't you ever knock? Look, I, um, I want you to forget Buford. That Cartwright was telling the truth. I want you to go after him. No, 
Blackie, please, please. He's he's such a nice man. The Ponderosa is even bigger than he said it was. Cattle, they can't even count. Horses, timber enough to build a dozen cities. I won't do it. Baby, you're not listening. The Ponderosa's richer than the Comstock ever was. Now, you're going to help me take him, or I'm going to spoil that pretty face of yours. For good. Now, get out there. Blackbird in the spring neath the willow tree sat and piped. I heard him sing, sing of Orly, 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 made of golden hair. Sunshine came along with the. Swallows in the air. On her cheek, the rose was born. Twas music when she spake. In her eyes, the rays of morn with sudden splendor break. Orly, orly. Made of golden hair, sunshine came along with me and swallows in the air. Excuse me, gentlemen. Fight like a man! Sit up here and mind your own business and just take care of yourself. Now, Dr. Bernie Love, he's making me mad. He's his own worst enemy. Don't hurt him. Now, what do you men think you're doing? Why, hi, Roy. Why, we just having a little discussion and... Well, if there's anybody here that don't want to spend the next couple of days in jail, he better sit right down and pacify us, though. Buford Buckaloo. And Lev Buckaloo. Evening, Sheriff. If you gentlemen will join me, I'll take you into protective custody. Now, come on. Protect you from what? From yourselves. Now, come on. I got that jail cell of yours all fixed and ready. You'll feel ready. Oh, come on. Now, don't you are giving me a lot of trouble here. Dolly. <laughs> you imagine a scrawny pipsqueak like that trying to take on a man like you? Well, he must have been out of his mind. Yeah. Well, I, I reckon Buford figured that he had something worth fighting for, Blackie. You know, we ain't all as lucky as you are. We can't just win the things we want in a poker game. Good night, Miss Dolly. Good night, Hoss.
worried after what happened last night that you, you might change your mind about showing me the Ponderosa. Not a chance, Miss Dolly. I made a promise to take you for a ride. And that's what I'm going to do. I'd give anything if it hadn't happened, Haas. I mean that. Don't give it a thought, Miss Dolly. We have them little scuffles all the time. Nobody ever gets hurt. I'm not so sure of that. I know that you and Buford were very good friends before. Well, Buford will get over it. He ain't one whole grudge. Get up. Howdy, Roy. Hi, Hawes. Dolly. Oh, you ain't no good. You know what that horse is doing? He's taking Miss Dolly buggy right. Name calling ain't gonna help or change thing. Now, if this was a two horse race, you and Hoss, I'd have to say that he's all but out of sight and you ain't even left the barn yet. Maybe it's all for the best. Yeah, I guess I don't blame you for saying that, Rev. All the scrapes you got me out of in the past, all the messes I've been in. But Miss Dolly, she ain't any more like the others than the sunrise is like the night. Well, I ain't been around enough women to really know, but I gotta admit, she looks mighty nice. Nice? Why, she's... she's plumb... <sighs> Lev, they just ain't invented words to tell you how I feel about her. She don't have to do nothing, don't have to smile. She just walks by and... I know, I seen it. And I might even believe she's all you say if we hadn't been through all of this so many times before. beautiful. What a wonderful way to live. It's a funny thing for you to say, Miss Dolly. I, uh, half the people in town would change their lives for your kind of romantic and exciting life. I'd trade with them any day. Are all shore people like you? How do you mean? I mean, well, you're different than you was when you first came here. And when you put on them show clothes and do all that singing and stuff, well, you're just different, you know? I don't know how to explain it. It's... You put it very well, Hoss. Well, now, when you're like you are now, a fella can talk to you and... pretty and... Well, it ain't just play acting, you know? I know what you're trying to say, Haas. The Dolly Bantry in Spangles and Sequins isn't a real person. And you can just change from this Dolly to that one? Well, not exactly. The other Dolly is always around, no matter how much this one would like to be rid of her. Well... I guess we should be getting back to town. No, ma'am, not just yet. Get up. Hey, Captain. Of course, the uh, Ponderosa didn't come into being overnight. As with most enterprises, uh, we've had a lot of luck. We've been very fortunate. I'll remember this house. So big and, and warm and, and friendly. So exactly right. Well, I, I take that as a high compliment, Miss Bantry. That's what we've been trying to build. 
Specialty third, Missy, Dolly. Number one apple pie. Little Joe, he eat a whole one before he leave this afternoon. Hop Sing, I, I couldn't possibly. What's your matter? You know, like Hop Sing cooking? Oh, I love it. It's just that I'm absolutely stuffed. You should eat more, Missy. You little bit thin. <laughs> well, I don't dare. I, I wouldn't fit into my costumes. You'll have to excuse Hop Sing, Miss Bantry. He, uh, he's an expert at minding other people's business. Well, Miss Dolly, I, I hate to rush you, but since you're not going to have any pie anyhow... And there's a bunch of boys who got tickets to that show tonight. I think we better get moving. Or they're going to be terribly disappointed. Well, I guess the show has a more peaceful ending tonight than last night. I can't tell you what my being here has meant to me. Living the way I do, one jury hotel room after another, well, you forget what a real home is like. I don't mean just the, the rooms and the furnishings, but, but you know what I mean. I think I do. Missy Dolly, goodbye present for you. Oh. One whole number one pie. Same as for little Joe. Maybe so more better you become too big for costume. Mr. Ben say they hardly enough to want shotgun. <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Cartwright, I do believe you're blushing. Don't give it a thought. Thank you again. Thank you, Hopsy. See you later, Paul. Thank you very much. Before you look at me like that, Hopsing only tell lady what you say. Yeah, I did say that. That's true. But I also said the costume was very becoming on her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is a real comfortable bed. If I thought all jails was like this, I might even be tempted to take up a life of crime. It's about time you're letting us out. Buford, you just better be thankful that Hoss Cartwright didn't file assault charges against you. Otherwise, you'd have been in here for another 30 days. That double-dealing, fork-tongued woman stealing varmint will be lucky if I don't tie his ears in a knot. <laughs> Being in jail does that to Buford. Gets him all riled up. After he's been out a while, he even gets worse. He gets worse? Give me a leather beer. Buford? It's, uh, it's good to see you. If you want to uh, step over to one of the tables while we can butt our heads together in a little two-hand poker. Fine friend you turned out to be. Letting Dolly go buggy riding with that. Hiding over in the corner, huh? Scared I was gonna walk you around again like yesterday, huh? Buford, I wasn't hiding. I was just sitting here waiting for you to get through spouting off over there so I could tell you. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm doing the telling. You keep your consar nose out of my business. And if I don't ever see you again, it's gonna be four days too soon. Buford, Buford. Miss Dolly Bantry has just confessed that the necklace that you purchased from Mr. Blackie Wells here for $2,000 was nothing but a string of glass beads. And... That him and her was in cahoots to separate you from your money. Why, you double shit. Shut up. Now, Buford, it's up to you. You know your rights. What do you want to do about it? It's kind of up to me, ain't it? Yeah. If I was to ask you to, why, you'd have to throw him in jail. And if I just wanted to be middling mean, why, you'd run him out of town. Yeah. Like this takes a little thinking about it. Sheriff, you mind if I have a little talk with him in private before I make up my mind? Well, no, not if that's what you want. Yeah, I, I just want to do the right thing. Right. Mr. Wells? Stop this. 
That Blackie's liable to hurt Buford something bad. He's mean. Real mean. Don't worry about Buford. He'll take care of himself. Whips me about every other week. Cosmo, you got a beer over there. Please. Do something. Sorry, man. There's nothing I can do with it. You're having a little discussion. Now, Blackie can be real reasonable. Give me back every dime of my money. Don't think I'll have you lock him up, Sheriff. Be satisfied if you just run him out of town with the understanding he don't even look back till he gets to Sacramento. He'll be on that first freight wagon out of town, Buford. Now, Miss Dolly here, she brought me the evidence. I expect you're going to be dropping the charges again her. Would you want her on that same freight wagon? No, sir. No, sir, Sheriff. I want her locked up. Buford! Do your duty, Sheriff. I want to press my charges again. her. I'm sorry, Miss Dolly. Uh, Buford knows his rights. Quit your sobbing and just throw her in the calaboose. Yes, sir. Buford! You can't mean that. I mean it! And if you don't keep your consarn nose out of my business, I'll get you locked up, too. Well, Lev, what are you waiting for? Why is he doing this tonight? Oh, Miss Dolly. As soon as I can find him, I think I can get him to drop his charges. He's probably off somewhere studying about it right now. Well, I found you both right where I want you. And I got a lot to say to you, Hoscott, right? Now, you've been sneaking up on it about as clumsy as a newborn calf. Wearing them fancy duds. Making out what an ignorant, uncurried, miserable-looking galoot I am. When all the time what you was really trying to do is tell me Miss Dolly wasn't interested in me. Just my money. Well, Buford, I was, I was just trying to do what was best for you, that's all. What kind of a numbskull do you take me for? You think I didn't know what they was up to? Dad, Bernie, Buford, the way you was acting... Any woman would rather have a rich man than a poor one. And if money's what it takes for me to have Dolly Bantree, she can have every penny I got. I don't know what money's good for if it ain't to buy the things you want in life. And all I want's Dolly. I had to say it, Miss Dolly... <laughs> That's why I had the sheriff lock you up, so that there Blackie wouldn't make you go away with him. So he wouldn't walk away before I got his said. I wouldn't have walked away. Well, that ain't all of it. There's a mite over $20,000 there, and there's more where that come from. Now, if it's fine hotels and fancy living you want, you can have it. I know I ain't as slick as Blackie Wells, but I do my best to see you ain't never ashamed of me. On the other hand, this, this your money could buy a little ranch I know of not too far out of town. There'd be enough left over to buy a starter herd of beef and to get the paint and the lumber to fix it up in the barn and the house and things. Living wouldn't be too easy. But if it's got any appeal to you, I'm offering you all the sweat and calluses I can raise in addition to my good name. Either way, I take as good a care of you as any man can, and I do my darndest to be any kind of man you want me to. Do you have me? Buford. If you are the god darndest, I'm twisting as wonderful a sweetheart a girl could ask for. 
<laughs> oh, I should like to marry If that I could find A very handsome fellow Suited to my mind Oh, I should like him dashing Oh, I should like him gay The leader of the fashion The dandy of the day Oh, I should like to marry If that I could find A very handsome fellow Suited to my mind Present for you, Missy Dolly. Hot sing is beautiful. Gentlemen, the bride! The bride! Hey! Hey! Uh, thank you. Well, I'm on the way. I sure don't envy you this trip. Well, something has to be done. We know that. Now, Joe, if it's just hard times, you tell Tom and Ellie to come right back here. There's always a place for them in the Ponderosa. All right. I hope that's all it is, just hard times. Yeah. I'll be seeing you. Right. Doc Jensen, veterinarian. At your service. Stable your horse, cure him if he's sick, or rent you one. What'll it be? See, as I just got off the stage, coach, how about renting me one? Mister, where do you plan to go with that horse? You kind of sneak up on a man, Sheriff. I asked you a question. Where do you plan to go with that horse? I'm gonna ride out and see a couple old friends of mine. I'd like to talk to you first. Sure, go ahead, talk. At my office. Over there. Down ordinance. What's this all about? It's about a bank robbery and a murder. Let's go. We shall have to hold up on that horse.
Sit down. Thanks. For starters, where are you from? Virginia City. Did you stop over in Tucson very long? Just long enough for the stage to change horses. Put your bag up here. Oh, come on, Sheriff. All I got in the bag is some clothes. Put it up here. Now open it. What are you doing in Amado? Yeah, well, this is the United States territory, isn't it? I already told you. I'm here to visit some old friends. Those friends got a name? Yeah, they got a name. Tom and Ellie Blackwell, you know? I know them. Never mentioned they expected anybody. Maybe that's because they mind their own business. You mind if I shut the bag? They didn't even know I was coming. That's why they didn't mention it. Is there any chance of you telling me where the place is? Sure. It's about six miles due east of here. Well, thank you very much. Now, if I could have my gun, I'd like to go to the hotel, check in, get a room. That is, if you're through with me. I'm not quite through. I think I'll drive you out to the Blackwells myself. I wouldn't want you to get lost. Benji, what are you up to now? I'm getting a drink. Well, make sure you don't spill any of it. I won't. I think your father's back. Uh, our wagon is Sheriff King. Who's the other man? But I'm not sure. Joe, hey, Joe, cut oh. it! Oh, it's good to see you. Oh, what are you doing way down here? I thought I'd just drop by. Hey, and this has got to be Benji. Your father's name, say. Hey, you're a big boy. I just can't believe you're here. I guess you two know each other. For about a million years, it seems. Mama, how does a man know my name? Because he's a very old, very dear friend. Say hello to Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better call me Joe, Benji. Sure, Joe. <laughs> oh, just look at me if I'd had any idea oh, you were you stop coming. worrying? Oh, it's good to see you. Didn't you catch some robbers yet, Sheriff King? Well, uh, no, no, I haven't, Benji, but uh, I'm working on it. You see, Mr. Cartwright, the, the Hollister gang robbed the bank in Tucson three days ago. They killed the cashier and the sheriff. They're supposed to have headed this way. And, well, you sort of fitted the description of one of them robbers. Well, anyways, we don't get many strangers in our town. Sheriff, you didn't think that Joe here was one of the robbers, did you? Well, Ellie, I didn't know him, and I wasn't... Sure you knew him until I brought him out here. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Cartwright. Glad to know you, Sheriff. I guess I can trust you with this now. No hard feelings, I hope. No hard feelings. Where are my manners? Come on in out of this hot sun, Ellie, both of Ellie, you. thanks, but I gotta get out. Is Tom back yet? No, he's uh, still in Nogales, looking for work. Well, the water wagons ought to be back from Indian Springs by tomorrow. I'll fetch some out to you. I sure would appreciate it, Sheriff. We're just about out. Is Joe gonna stay with us? Of course he is. No, of course I am not. I'm going to go in town with the sheriff and get a room and come back I and visit. I will not hear of it. You're going to stay right here. Can't argue with a lady. I've got my bag. <laughs> there you are, son. I have to wait till the sheriff brings the water out before I can wash these up. Things have been going pretty rough, huh? No drought. No crops. I never wanted you to see me like this. Can't even serve you a decent meal. Dinner was fine. Ellie, if things were going so bad, why didn't you let us know? You know we would have helped you. I didn't want to ask for any charity. Oh, now, come on. We've been friends too long for that kind of talk. Well, I was afraid maybe... maybe Tom wouldn't like it. Ellie, I know it's none of my business, but is there anything wrong between you and Tom? No. Of course not. Come on, you can do this work later. Sit down for a while.
You know, I read that letter you wrote to Pa. I never meant for you and Horst to read that. I never should have written it. Oh, I was... I was, I was alone here, and things were going badly, and... Well, I was just feeling low, that's all. I didn't expect you to come all the way down here. Oh, I guess I... I just wanted your pa's shoulder to cry on. The way I used to, remember? Yeah, I remember. You were always one of the family. I know. I'll never forget what your father did for Tom. Getting him out of all that trouble and into the army was the best thing ever happened to him. Yeah, I heard he won a lot of medals. Oh, he was so proud when he got out. Maybe too proud. Joe, he's tried so hard here. But he, he's done his best with his place, and it's not his fault things haven't turned out well. How long has he been down there, Gallus? This time? Mm, five, six days. He'll be around home for a while, and then it seems like he just can't stand seeing the way things are, and, and he has to get away. Well, you're going to have to try to understand him. It's, well, it's something that happens to men sometimes when they... They can't do the kind of things they'd like to do for their families. I don't want you to worry about it. When he comes back, I'll have a talk with him. You know, we got a lot of good farmland on the Ponderosa, just waiting for a plow to dig into it. Now, Joe, now, now I don't didn't... don't give me any of that charity nonsense or I'll put you over my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Joe. I'll just be a minute. It's just an old Indian that comes by here. Name's Indian Pete. He comes by for table scraps. I guess no matter how badly off you are, there's always somebody has it worse. Hey, you know, that's a good thing to remember. You sounded just like your father when you said that. <laughs> you must be dead tired after that long, hot trip. As a matter of fact, I am. Oh, come on. I'll show you to your room. We'll have plenty of time for talking tomorrow. Hey, this is nice. I sure hope I'm not putting you out too much. Of course not. Anyway, the room's not even being used. I always have Benji sleep in my room when Tom's away. I know it sounds silly, but I get a little scared being way out here all alone. Doesn't sound silly at all. Good night. Good night, Joe. That's a fine way to greet an old friend. How you doing? All right, Blackwell. Well, you said hello, now step aside. I thought you said only your wife and kid was here. I didn't know he was here. I swear I didn't. Rita. Rita, get in here! Go find his gun. And check those rooms. Tom, what is it? What's happening? Well, they stopped me on the road. And they promised not to hurt anybody. Now, please, just, just do as they say. You better start talking, Blackwell. Who is he? His name's Cartwright. I didn't know anything about him coming here. He's telling you the truth. I got here late this afternoon. You picked a fine time. Well, you're here now. But so am I. You see this? Yeah, I see that. What's the setup, Rita? The other room's empty. The kids are asleep in this one. Now, you listen to me. 
My father's outside. We're gonna bring him in. He's hurt bad, so I ain't gonna worry about anybody else. Anybody gets smart, I'll kill him. And that goes for you, lady. And the kid. You two, now get out. It's all right, Pop. You rest now. I'll be here with you. You're a good son, Wade. You and me and Rita. We gotta make it. We'll make it all right. You just hang on. I need a doctor, son. I'm hurting bad. When we get to Mexico, we'll get you one. A real good one. Yeah. Sure you will, son. real bad. That wound's got to be cleaned. You boil some water. What's the matter with you? Don't you hear so good? There isn't any water. If you don't believe it, look for yourself. Where's your well? It's been bone dry for a year. We've had drought for the last three. You see a crop within 50 miles of here? You get water someplace. Hey, don't worry, there'll be some water here tomorrow. Sheriff's gonna bring some out. Are you getting smart with me? Well, you don't believe much of anybody tells you, do you? Why would a sheriff deliver water? He does it to help Ellie out when I'm gone, that's all. We don't want no sheriff snooping around here. Let's get out of here, Wade. Sounds like pretty good advice, Alistair. Shut up. Go on out there and bring our saddlebags and canteens in here. If you, know, you plan on staying around here for a while, you better figure on uh, how you're going to stop that sheriff. He shows up around here, he'll get his head blowed off. Wade, you promised there wouldn't be any shooting. My wife and boy are here. So's Cartwright. That changes things. Look, the, uh, the sheriff wouldn't think anything about it if I went after the water in the morning. Hmm? That sounds to me like a smart way out. How come you're getting so helpful of a sudden, Cartwright? I'm just trying to stop some innocent people from getting killed, that's all. You better start worrying about keeping yourself from getting killed. It's a good idea we'll try it. <laughs> you got all that choice. You're just itching to have your head split open, ain't you? I said we'll try it. Now, the both of you sit over there against the wall and face it. Well, come on, hurry up. Get in there with your kid. If he wakes up, keep him quiet. And keep the door open. Take care, Pa. Fix them some soup. We gotta get some food in them. I want you to take over. I gotta get a couple hours of shut-eye. What about me, Wade? I haven't had any sleep in three days. Well, you do as I say. Ain't I got enough troubles? Don't yell! And do like I tell you! You're getting kind of cramped. You mind if I turn around and stretch a minute? Go ahead. Just don't stand up. Couldn't think of it. Yeah, that's a lot better. Thank you. Don't mean you're going to get any special privileges. No, I suppose it doesn't.
What are you staring at? Just you. I was just thinking, put a, put a dress on you, fix you up a little bit. You'd be a good-looking girl. Without the gun in your hand, of course. <laughs> just don't you forget I got this gun. Tell me, what's it all get you? All the what? Oh, the killing, the robbing, running from the law. What for? I have good times. Lots of them. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, having Wade order you around, have you doing his chores while, while he gets his rest. Wade and old Neil and me, we understand each other. Oh, you're a big happy family. Yeah. You can put it like that if you want to. How's it all wind up? Oh, I know how it's going to wind up. We're getting out of here. We're going to Mexico and Wade and me are going to get married. In a real church. And I'm gonna have the finest. What do you care? I really don't care, Rita. That's the sad part of it. I don't think anybody else does either. You've stretched long enough. Turn around and face the wall. I said turn around and face the wall. That's very good. Now you can start loading the barrels. Cart right, you can. <laughs> Wait a minute. Rita! Yeah? What do you want? Get in here! What do you want? Keep an eye on Cartwright. I thought nobody passed here. Well, nobody does. We're a half a mile off the road. Then who is that? Uh, it's only Indian Pete. What's he doing here? Ali stops by all the time, hoping for food scraps so he can feed us all score. He can't do no harm. How do you know he'll keep his mouth shut? He can't even talk, Wade. His tribe cut his tongue out when he wanted to make peace during the Apache War. All right. Just get rid of him. That blasted Indian go away. All right. Cartwright, help him load the barrels. Remember, if you're not back here in a couple hours, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, the water may not be there yet. They have to haul it in from Indian Springs. I don't know if those wagons will be on schedule. Well, for your sake, they better be on schedule. What were you two gabbing about out there? Told them to do what you said, that's all. If you're lying, I'll find out about it. Rita? Keep an eye on Cartwright. I want to check on Paul. Into the kitchen, Cartwright. He's getting worse. He needs a doctor. He's right, son. 
As soon as that wagon gets back, we're gonna start packing the move. This ain't no way for a man to die. You ain't gonna die, Pa. I promise you that. We've been in tighter fixes than this before, and we got out. You're a good boy, Wade. I raised you good. You sure did. You just rest a while, Pa. I'll fix you some hot soup. There's some stuff in those saddlebags. Get it out and cook it. Use the water in the canteens. Mommy. I'm hungry, Mommy. Go on, get in there and take care of the kid. Let her do it. She's his mother. I'll cook the grub. I'm sick of you cooking. Now get in there and take care of the kid like I told you. Just one big happy family. I told you to get the grub. I wish Tom would hurry up and get back. I'm getting worried. You're gonna have reason to worry if he don't show up soon. Don't worry, he'll be back. Hey, Tom! How'd you get back? You got in last night. Did you, uh, have any luck finding work? No, not much. Well, I better be getting on back, Doc. We're out of water. Yeah. Sure has been rough on all of us. Oh, uh... Say, Tom, I got a load of hay coming in. Might be a couple days' work for you. I sure would appreciate that, Doc. Times like these, we all gotta stick together, Tom. Yeah, we sure do. Thanks a lot, Doc. Send our cart right to help you. All right, Cartwright, get out there and help him unload. Mommy! Mommy! Shut that kid up, will you, Rita? Mommy! Can't I go to him? Rita, did you hear me? No, I told you I wouldn't risk my family. Hurry it up, you two. supposed to know that was part of our deal. Now get out there and unload those barrels. You take a good look at her, Tom. She was so proud of you. Jack, the 
the giant ran faster still. With a mighty hand, the giant grabbed Jack by the seat of the pants. By the seat of the britches. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that what I said? You said pants. Oh. But Jack managed to wriggle away and reach the beanstalk just in time. He fell, he fell rather than climbed down its long green stalk. And landed with a bounce in its mother's garden. Oh. Say, you're a smart kid, ain't you? <laughs> He's hotter than a desert rock. It looks badly infected. He must have a doctor. He'll get one. As soon as we get across the border, the best money can buy. Ma'am, I uh, want to thank you. I appreciate it. I'd do the same for any sick animal. getting worse. We'll get out of here, Ellie. We'll make it to Mexico. You and me and the boy. Will we, Tom? Sure we will. There's a lot of money in there. Part of it belongs to us. Stolen money. I'd rather Benji and I were both dead than to go with you now. Ellie... You don't mean that. I mean it, Tom. Oh, don't you see what a fool you were? You threw away every chance you had just because you were too weak to swallow your stupid pride. Weak? Yes, weak! Well, it's easy for you to talk. You didn't scratch on his dirt like I did. Don't you think a man wants things decent for his wife and son? Decent? What do you call decent? You call murder decent? Yes. If that's the only way I could get them the things I wanted them to have. You mean the things you always wanted. I already had what I wanted. You. But you wouldn't even understand that. Quit your arguing in here. You make my pa nervous. We? Where are you, son? Right here, Paul. What was all that arguing about out there? Cartwright and Blackwell, they're beginning to make me real sick, Paul. Ain't nothing wrong, is there? We're going to get to Mexico all right, ain't we? Sure we are. Is the money safe? It sure is. I gotta have that money, son. I'm getting old. This was supposed to be my last job. I spent free all my life, and I, I need that money. You're gonna get your money. You say that, but I don't know... Ever since you met up with that girl, things ain't been the same. We was close, you and me, and, and now it's her. Well, she ain't gonna make no difference between you and me, Pa. I'm your son. Well, we got to get out of here, Wade. Sure, Pa. Wade. Here, quick. Sheriff King, from town. I'll go on out and get rid of him. Howdy, Tom. Doc Jensen said you was back. Howdy, Sheriff. Oh, it's sure a hot one, ain't it? Uh huh. Mind if I set a spell? You, get in the bedroom with your kid. Rita, you stay in there with her. On the 
floor, face down. Yeah, it's even hotter than it was yesterday. You find any work, Tom? No. The way I figured, them outlaws are still around here someplace. Well, I doubt it, Sheriff. What makes you think so? Been watching the border. They ain't crossed. The way I see it, that one they wounded was so bad they had to go to ground. Well, there hasn't been anybody come by here. You keep your eyes open. I'm making up a posse, Tom. I'd like you to join us, but I think it's better if you stay here and protect your family. I bet Ellie was glad to see you back. Yes, she was. I sure want to thank you for hauling water to her. Oh, don't mention it. Is she around? Oh, she's uh, taking a nap with Benji. Yeah. Well, this hot weather sure does make you sleepy. <laughs> no doubt about that. You tell your, uh, your friend Cartwright that I'd like him to join us, if he's a mine, too. All right, Sheriff. I will. Sure got a Gabby Sheriff. Took his time, didn't he? Wait, he's raising a posse. You know, they think we're still around. Oh, I know. I heard. Well, what are we going to do? Well, I don't know about you, but Rita, Paul, and me are getting out of here tonight. What do you mean, you don't know about me? What about my share of the money? What share? Wade, you promised. Now, you ain't bucking out on me now. Ain't I? You know, Blackwell, you've been in a lot of trouble to me. You ain't getting no share. So what do you plan to do about that? I said you ain't backing out on me. I'll put that away, Blackwell. Rita! Don't try anything, Blackwell. I sure picked the wrong one when I picked you, didn't I? Oh, you picked some nice friends, Tom. Some real nice friends. you can lug a mattress out for me and tow some water for the horses. Rita, why don't you start packing the grub and fill the canteen? Uh, Wait. Uh, Watch them. Pa. Pa, uh, it's uh, Wade. Mrs. Blackwell, get in here, quick. You must have fallen out of bed. Oh, here, let me help you. Huh? Uh. Paul, can you hear me? His wound's broken open. He has to have help or he'll bleed to death. You stay here with him. Do what you can. He's in a bad way. We gotta get a doctor. Wade, we can't take a chance. He's dying. We gotta take a chance. Wade. What do you want? I'll make a deal with you. I'm the only one who can go to town for the doctor. Just promise me that Ellie and Benji will be all right. Oh, you think I'd trust you now? You'd come back here with a sheriff. No, I wouldn't, Wade. I'd just let Ellie and Benji and Cartwright go. Stop begging him. He's not gonna listen to you. Besides, he just soon let his old man die anyway. I'm going to split your head open, Cartwright. Wade, I won't double-cross you. I'm the only one you can send. Now, there's somebody else. What about the Indian, the one that comes by every night for scraps? What about him? 
Yeah, what about that old Indian? Blackwell says he can't even talk. He can pack a note, can he? Are you trying to pull some kind of a... Look, you can't trust Tom. It's either the Indian or you'll let your old man die. That's up to you. All he has to do is bring a note into Doc Jensen. Doc Jensen? That's right, Doc Jensen. I met him when I was in town. He said he was a good friend of yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Are you sure that Indian will come by? Oh, he'll come by. He hasn't missed in three years. Oh. All right, I'm going to risk it. Get a piece of paper and a pencil and then write what I tell you. Might not be a bad idea to tell him your little boy's sick. That ought to bring him. That'll get him here real quick. Start writing, Blackwell. Nice and easy, Doc. Tom, what's this all about? I couldn't help myself, Doc. Search him, Rita. Ellie, what's going on? Do what he says, Doc. Please. Bag two. Just doctor stuff. You're gonna treat a man for gunshot, Doc. And he better live. Can't do it without my instruments. Give me the bag. And watch that. Into the bedroom, Doc. Take care of your kid. He's in bad shape. I know that. Just get busy. Well, the doc was right. There's something wrong in there. He's had plenty of time to let us know if it was all right. No doubt about it now. No, don't fire. Ellie and the boy are still in there. Just keep working. Cover the back. Who are they? How'd they get here? The doctor brought them on. It looks like the joke's on you, Hollister. See the man in there with your father. 
That's a horse doctor. Why, you... Good to see you, Ben. Good to see you. You said sure is. Well, this must be Benji. Howdy, Benji. Somebody at the ranch just waiting to meet you. His name is Hop Singh, and he makes the best pumpkin pie there is. And he's made something special for you. Yes, sir, he's made some dumplings and fried chicken. I like fried chicken. How about you? I like fried chicken, too. Charlie, get those bags down here. We're going home. 